So is it just me or does it feel like everybody else has it all together? Um, if you have been asking yourself these questions, oh, it's gorgeous, the look in the other balcony, but I felt like filming in the balcony, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you've been asking yourself these questions, if you wake up and you ask these questions to yourself very often, then this video is for you. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to share two personal of my personal examples of me trying to compare myself to other people, how, what I do to overcome them and some practical tips that you can maybe implement in your uh, own personal journeys to help you deal with this fear of missing out or constant comparison syndrome that is just one of the, I guess, one of the modern type illnesses, like all, almost like the social media type of illness. And I'm also going to share with you a personal story that a friend of mine shared with me yesterday about how that was affecting her life and what and how that made her feel um, so to begin with for me it is I I tried and I know it's you know it's the funniest thing we know we have watched enough videos to know that we're not supposed to really compare ourselves to others because everyone's journey is different and yet we do it for example, for me, I didn't use social media too much, which is a mistake for me because I would like to get more inspiration from social media. I miss uploading to YouTube more often what I'm doing at the moment. I miss um, being online, really. It's just something that I miss in my life at this moment and I'm, I'm doing, I am working on improving that. So what I did was I spent my whole day yesterday researching what the top brands and what the top content creators do, how often they upload, what sort of videos they upload, where. <coughs> and I quickly started to have this feeling of what am I doing with my life? Like, why am I, why is everybody else able to do 50 million types of different content? And why am I not able to like shoot four videos in a single day? And uh, and just call it a day and why do I not have the inspiration to think about new concepts etc etc what's wrong with me and then I was out with a friend later that day and when I shared her about this situation and I also shared with uh, somebody on my team as well and both of them were like yeah but that's probably not the way these content creators started they are probably they probably started with very simple videos probably like not as many videos as they're uploading now and there is probably a whole team of people that work with them and that make all of these th all of these videos a reality and i thought about it for a second i was like yeah damn you're right that 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 does sound about right and it, but i don't have the capacity to my business is not at a stage where i can even hire somebody full time to do this for me where you really need somebody to and i'm trying to adapt i'm seeing like what friends can help me etc um, but in the first moment I was like, yeah, that's right. And probably because I have this, um, I have this syndrome that is kind of like an idealistic syndrome or a fa fatalist syndrome, or I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's this feeling of always wanting everything to be, I guess it's called also being a perfectionist, but also like expecting the best and striving to do like what's not only what's right, but also what's what I'm capable of doing, like the best thing that I'm able to do. And so in this regard, I know that I, if I want to, for example, develop my social media account, I really need to be uploading every single day. But then at the same time, I am not like, I'm not able to do that. But I see everybody else doing it. And I'm asking myself, what is wrong with me? And why can I not do it? And so this friend and so what my friends told me was, and what they gave me perspective about was that it's okay to start with something smaller. And what you see online is very often not the case. I'm sure that all of us are used to like seeing everybody else at their best, you know, on the Maldives, on in Dubai, like just living their best life. But that's not what happens behind the screen and behind the scenes. Uh, there is often very often like so many things that we just don't talk about that are the actual things that happen before like you know those 
public victories come into place. It's a lot of private victories that need to happen in the first place that are what takes you where you want to go, but not many people are willing to take talk about it and they are not willing to talk about it because usually people are impressed by something flashy, something weird, we all fall for this. We are impressed by something flashy, by something... It's just much easier to, for example, if you watch the news, I don't, but if you do, you might have noticed that it's always like the bad stories that make it to the to the front page, etc. It's because this is what people want to hear. It's because what this is what drives engagement. And it's the same on social media as well. And so what this friend shared with me as well was um, I, she had this colleague that was just treating her very badly. She was complaining all the time. She had this job for... I know for two months my friend and then her colleague and then she said from day one she's constantly complaining she's constantly um, she's constantly talking ill of the company and then I'm like you don't need these people in your life you do realize that right and then she's like yes I do understand that I was like you deserve much much more you should you don't even need to bother just spending any time energy whatsoever talking to such a person and then she was like yeah i understand that um and then she was like but what really bothers me and what really started what really got me and this is the reason i'm telling you the story is because for our company there are like all sorts of you know opinions online and there was a, a girl that had the ignorance of or not ignorance but like i'm not sure the word about the word but she said she was she would um she would refuse to come on an interview for a job because she said that quote unquote there are like only what sort of rats work at that company or something like that slavery rats or something like that and then I was scandalized about that and I told my colleague and then she turned around and she said, well, she is right. And then she told me, my friend shares with me, she was like, at that moment, I felt like, what am I doing with my life? Like, what do, am I a failure? And then I was like, you need to, you're not a failure, first of all. Second, you need to understand that this person is probably not going to stay too long at that company, at your company. Um, and third, you need to, you, right now it looks like you have a lot of like people that you, you don't vibe with in your life. And that's a, a very, I think this is why I'm sharing this because I think this is, uh, very much where such, um, such thoughts, such feelings come from is that, um, very often if we feel like we're missing out in life, we're very, very often surrounded by people who subconsciously make us feel that way. And so I told her, it's probably the company of people that you are around that is wrong, not you. And that is something that you can change. And right now, and she said, yeah, but that she makes me feel dismissive. Like when I share that I feel unwell, she just says that. Oh, you shouldn't feel that way, which is totally dismissive of someone's feelings. And this is not the way it works. And I told her, it's probably something to do with, I've been in a similar situation in the past. And it's been like people around me that I've, to, I've very much, very often I've felt left out. I felt like I was an outsider in a company because I felt like I was missing something. I felt like there was something in me that was wrong. And so I felt like everybody else is having a great time. Everybody else had their company already of people. But I still didn't have it. Uh, and it's probably because I am missing something personally. And I told her, I've been in a similar situation, but I've changed my perspective so much recently in the past few years that I am no longer dependent on what someone else is going to think about me so that I know if I'm losing anything in life or not if that makes sense so I told her 
at some point you will realize that these people don't deserve your time they don't deserve your friendship and they don't deserve your energy and in it's there's no n- no reason for you to waste your energy on such people and um i told her this is at least what happened with me and it is something that takes time but i think it's a transitional period that all of us go through all of us meet people that we don't vibe with we don't enjoy etc and at some point most of us choose to cautious, consciously just refuse to spend time and energy with that with those sorts of people and then find people that are our blood type the way i like to say it and then once you do or at least this is what happened with me it stops being about i'm missing about i'm missing something in life because you also have the right people that support you around you uh for the right reasons they're going to be listening to you they're going to be but that i think is a shift that we sh- we should make in the first place ourselves it's a decision that we can cautiously take and at some point it is not in my opinion it is not arrogant to say i don't want to spend time with you i don't have time for you because you i'm in a in such a position in my life at the moment for example that there are many people that would like to spend time with me but i can't spend time with everyone and that's not because i'm arrogant or because i don't want to spend time with these people it's just because i have to be very careful about where i spend my time because i only have 24 hours and i have too many things to, to do uh i can't just be with people all the time i wouldn't get anything done if i'm with people all the time that said i love my my friends to bits and i love spending time with them but i'm very cautious about who i let in my life what i let them for uh for example i know that there are some people that i can i can only talk about the weather with i can, there are some people that i'm like i can only meet these guys three times in a year or girls uh and that's completely fine i it might sound brutal but i've started categorizing people on i can spend this much time with you i can spend that much time with them and i can talk about this with you and i can talk about that with them and i i try not to cross match the two because it doesn't work people don't want to talk about politics if they don't want to talk about politics as well for example i not that i would talk about a politics but and so i think that this feeling this deep feeling of fear of missing out that everybody else has this perfect life or very often also it comes from the environment and from the perspective that we have of other people and when you have the right people for the right reasons and that is something that takes time unfortunately and i think it's a transitional period that we all go through but unless that happens i think that it's inevitable that we have this uh this syndrome of missing out so something important i think that is also worth mentioning is that it's when we have this feeling it's very often we think that we are alone but uh, it was literally me walking outside and meeting with one of the like with with when with my friend uh, i was meeting that evening that i realized that all of us are going through this and when we realize that all of us are going through this and we talk about it a bit more openly it just becomes a bit more a bit easier for us to kind of like go through it because as i mentioned i think this is a period that all of us go through So in knowing that there are other people that feel the same way as us it almost like makes us feel better right it's uh, uh, not that um if somebody else feels bad we should feel good but at least we know that we are not alone and us knowing that we are not alone i think that's a very big part of the equation and just saying to you like you shouldn't feel that way would be the ter- the, the probably the worst thing for me to do because it's not this this would be dismissive of the emotions of the people watching this video This is not the way it works. It's very often like you just can't tell somebody you shouldn't be feeling that way. I personally believe that those this is part of the beauty of life. It might sound too philosophical, but I truly believe that you know if there were not the bad moments and the more um uh, how to put it the more disappointing moments the the moments that we don't feel our best then how would we know when we're feeling our best and it's just part of the beauty of life and for me what really helps is like uh, understanding these emotions accepting these emotions rather than trying to run away from them and then seeing what i can do to make it better um but in accepting them that is really what makes me feel better and also realizing that everything in life is temporary i i really like a song by 
um, the Avenue Q musical. It's called For Now. I'm gonna link it down below. But it's like basically everything in life is only for now. The good, the bad, everything. Let me see if I'm gonna miss something. Oh yeah, practical tips to overcome this feeling. Well, um, the first thing that I shared was um, accepting it, that it's there and that it's fine for you to feel that way. And then second, I'd say talking to somebody about this. I think it's very important that when we feel like that, we don't hold it inside. We go and talk to somebody. And what helps me personally is limiting myself of what I see online. For example, I would, I need, I'm yet to do this, but muting people on Instagram that I should be following for, even though I shouldn't really be following these people, but muting people that I'm not really interested in knowing what their life is all about anymore. Um, just because I, I don't have to clog my sp mental space with this information. There is just, there's, it's limited already as it is. So also um, spending less time on social media, spending less time on Tinder, I would definitely say, uh, is something that helps with not c comparing yourself to other people. I would say also, so in seeing that, I also feel bad. I hope you felt better. <laughs> um, I love if you shared with me what your personal way of dealing with such situations in life is and um, maybe there is something that we didn't know about if you could share it down in the comments that'd be great um, and if you feel like there is a friend that you have or somebody that you know that really needs to hear these things now is a great time for you to send them this video i hope it helps them as well and this is especially true that it, I, I would uh, end this video on a positive not say, note saying that everything's gonna be all right as we said like it's something that's gonna pass um but it's also something that is very important to for, for me was very important to understand is that this is a completely normal part of growing up as a person in terms of um personal development especially when you have big ambitions you want to achieve something greater in life it's it's just it's it's a common thing that happens i feel like or at least i've been told and i i'd like to believe that it that's the case so thank you for watching this video thank you for supporting me if you gave this video a thumbs up it would really help me develop this channel as it's still new uh, and you can catch me on social media and I am going to catch you in the next video. Bye.